Welcome back. Recent terrorist attacks in Europe has shown that a lot more needs to be done to protect citizens' lives from these attacks. After the Bastille Day attack in Nice, in which 84 people were killed, France had to tell itself the truth, that it had become a target of ISIS because of the attack against ISIS in Syria, a fight France has promised never to pull out from. German Chancellor Angela Merkel, on her part, says there is no shifting ground on the country's migration policy, despite lone wolf attacks by radicalized individuals unleashing terror on the people that took them in referring to migrant crisis uh, currently facing Europe. Now, it seemed like Germany opened her doors and invited would-be attackers into the country. The frequency of the attacks have got leaders thinking what can be done. French government officials attending a mass for slain priest Father Jacques Hamel in Notre Dame. Father Hamel was killed by knife-wielding attackers who interrupted a church service. They forced him to his knees and slit his throat last Tuesday. France's anti-terrorism prosecutor François Molins identified one of the attackers as 19-year-old Adel Kamerch, a local man who was known to intelligence services after his failed bids to reach Syria to wage jihad. The Islamic State released a video of the two men it said attacked the church. They were later identified as Abu Omar and Abu Jahil El Hanafi. Police had shot and killed both as they emerged from the church. This happened barely two weeks after 84 people were killed in Nice while celebrating Bastille Day. The nation was yet to recover when Father Hamel was killed. President Francois Hollande said Islamist militant threat to France and Europe has never been so severe as now, but declared his resolve. France is not the only country targeted by the militants. Germany, too, has had its own experience. Recent attacks in Germany have been described as shocking, oppressive and depressing. German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who cut short her vacation to address the green phobia for refugees, said the fact that the two attackers in Germany were refugees mocks Germany and its effort to help. Five attacks have been carried out since July 18 in Germany and have left 15 people dead, including four attackers and dozens more injured. Bavaria State Premier Horst Seehofer says Germany must face the fact that Islamic terrorism has arrived and it must respond with tougher security and tighter immigration policies. While hundreds have marched in Berlin demanding Chancellor Merkel to step down and for the flow of refugees to stop, Mrs Merkel has said Germany can cope with the challenge of integrating refugees and the threat of Islamist violence. Last week, Pope Francis compared recent terrorist attacks to last century's world wars, saying that the world is at war because it has lost the peace. In light of these attacks, one country has been lending its support to friends in Europe and in Nigeria, where the Boko Haram insurgency has plagued for a few years. The Canadian government has promised its cooperation in fighting global terror, though it has not experienced one of its own, a major one, that's to say. But it's not to say that it's not ready. Earlier in July, the government of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau began conducting a lengthy review of Canada's defences and is expecting to produce a policy white paper in early 2017. The Defence Policy Review will assess Canada's obvious strategic vulnerabilities and determine the capabilities that the Canadian Armed Forces will require to overcome those challenges. I had a chat with the country's outgoing High Commissioner to Nigeria, Perry Calderwood, on his views about the recent terror attacks. Firstly, I would say uh, Canada, of course, has extended its condolences to, to the families and friends of, uh, of everyone who has um, been affected or killed by the recent series of incidents in different parts of the, of the world. Uh, I'm not an expert on security, so I, I'm not going to analyze uh, the particular cases, but it, it's obvious uh, to us, to, to Canada, that these incidents remind us all that we must work together uh, to combat terrorism. It's something that um, affects countries around the world. We've had terrorist incidents in Canada, not recently, uh, thankfully, but we have in the past. Nigeria has, has suffered 
the impact uh, of terrorism. Uh, so countries around the world, we must work together to improve our intelligence, our security. Um, and, and I think we need to think carefully and, and study what are the sources, what are the causes of these problems, and, and what are the circumstances that drive some people to, to radical and violent behavior and, and seek ways to, to prevent that from, from happening. Does Canada also have a diversification of uh, religious uh, groups and so on? And do you also have a challenge of trying to uh, prevent one group from you know, trying to impose its own beliefs on other groups? In Canada, uh, we're very, we've been very successful and I think we're very proud of our country as one that has integrated people from around the world very successfully. Uh, Canadians um, trace their origins to all parts of the world. There are different religions in Canada, different languages spoken, different customs practiced. And um, uh, our society is very well integrated and, and we do not have uh, significant groups of people who, who are not well integrated into, into our society. And, and I think that is, is one of the challenges for, for many countries around the world to ensure in this time of migration and movement of people that we do our utmost to ensure that um, people who, who come to our countries are well integrated um, into the fabric of our respective societies. With the recent um, migrant crisis plaguing Europe, we've seen a surge in a number of people leaving African countries as well as Middle Eastern countries fleeing violence and crisis and war in their countries, trying to get to Europe to start over again, a better life and so on. Canada seems to have been impervious to all of this. So have you, has there been a rise in the number of uh, migrants trying to get to Canada? Have you seen a number, an increase in the number of people trying to enter your country and settle in, probably fleeing some of the violence that we're talking about? Uh, Canada has welcomed more than 25,000 Syrian refugees. Uh, we have proactively invited these people to come to Canada. Um, uh, Canada, of course, has an ocean between us and Europe and the Middle East, so we, we haven't had people arriving by land or by sea the way European countries have. Uh, but that said, we feel very strongly that all members of the international community have a moral obligation to help address the refugee crisis that has resulted from the conflict. And since we're talking terror, the Nigerian army has greatly decimated the Boko Haram group, which has been um, unleashing terror on many Nigerians, especially northeast of the country. Canada has been a great contributor to um, the fight against Boko Haram. What exactly did you do? I was fortunate enough in late June to travel to Maiduguri and from there to Damaturu in, in, in Yobe State uh, by land and was able to see with my own eyes that uh, a large measure of security has been restored, at least in, in the cities. Um, sadly, I also saw that uh, the humanitarian impact of the uh, Boko Haram insurgency. Um, a lot of our effort has been focused in the area of training the federal police of Nigeria. We've offered a number of courses over the last couple of years focused on areas such as post-blast investigation, interview techniques, intelligence gathering and so forth to help the police uh, strengthen its capacity to combat con crime, including terrorism. Uh, that's, that's one example and in the area of security we've supported a number of other projects in, elsewhere in the country. Would you say there's a lesson the rest of the world can perhaps learn from what we have done? In my experience, and I've, I've lived in different parts of the world including somewhere there are conflicts, um, each situation tends to be distinct and different, so I, I'd be very reluctant to say that there are particular recipes that are going to work here or, or there, that, that the, same, the same response is appropriate in each situation. I think in any of these situations where you have an insurgency or, or, or a movement like that, there are usually underlying factors at play. Um, insurgencies don't usually emerge where you have a, a prosperous society with good governance and respect for human rights and, and so forth. So I think the first challenge for, for any society that is facing this kind of challenge is to look at itself and see what are the circumstances here that are giving rise to these radical ideologies and these, and these rebel movements and then find ways to confront and address those issues to undermine the uh, scope and the potential for radical individuals to, to recruit people.